Hello, my name is Will Carmack, and in lieu of season two of The Boys, I'm gonna start a little editing tutorial series on how to do the effects from each of the seven. Today we'll start with Homelander, with how to do the glowing eyes, how to shoot lasers out of your eyes, how to land epically, and how to throw someone to their crushing death. So let's hop into After Effects and we'll start with the easiest one, the glowing eyes. So I have my footage here and it's a close up of my face. And since I want my eyes to glow, that means I probably want some tracking data of how my eyes move. So I come to the tracker panel, I click the track motion button, and since my eyeball kind of stands out, I track that. And now I have all of this tracking data I can apply to anything. So I create a new null, and let's name this iris. In the tracker panel, let's edit target, select the iris, and hit OK. What we're doing now is we're applying all of this tracking data to the null. So if we pull in any asset, we can just connect that to the null. Believe it or not, this makes our life easier because then we don't have to really edit the thing we're importing at all. And so we'll go to one of my favorite websites ever, Footage Crate. Not a sponsor, I, I actually pay for their subscription. And if you look through their magics panel, there's a lot of cool glowing balls you could use. My favorite was Red Valor. It was a 4K glowing asset and I downloaded it. And now, if we bring that into Adobe After Effects, we can reposition it and scale it to be right where we want it on our eyeball. And if we grab that tiny swirly thing, which we call the pick whip, and drag that onto our iris, our null layer, all the tracking data that we got from our eye will now be onto the glowing red eye laser. And voila, if you watch it back, you'll see that the glowing eye is perfectly tracked and it looks epic. And now all we have to do is duplicate that layer, change the anchor point to the left, place it on the other eye, and now you've got two laser eyes you've tracked onto your face. Pretty epic. And if you really wanna sell the oomph, like the, the, the realism, create an adjustment layer and apply the curves effect to that. Bring up the reds and the whites to make it a little bright and red. Add the exposure effect. Hold down the Alt key, click on exposure. Type in wiggle 10 comma 0.5. What this does is make the exposure kind of flicker up and down. And so since the exposure value is always changing, it looks like it's flickering. And this is a key thing in After Effects. If you bring in a third party asset like these glowing eyes, you also need to remember that you need to animate how it affects the environment. So that's what we did to make the effect super cool. Oh, and set the eyes to screen. It just helps it blend it into the scene more. So that is glowing eyes. Now what about laser eyes? Easy. First of all, I'm going to do this with Video Copilot's free plugin Saber. I'll link that down below. Again, not sponsored. They just have incredible stuff. So here I am kind of thrusting my face forward. I think at the end of my thrust, that's when I want the lasers to start coming out of my eyes. If I create a black solid and I type in Saber into the effects panel and I drag that onto the black solid, we get this nice blue laser. Let's come to the render settings and set it to transparent. And with the path options or whatever, set that to layer masks. So now if we grab the pin tool and we create two points, the laser will always be following your mask. Easiest way to create any kind of laser beam ever. So what I did is I came up to the top option, which is preset, and I select energize, which just makes it look a little bit more laser beamy, you know, a little more aggressive. And I simply just created a mask keyframe and masked the line, the laser line, to basically come out of my eye and then eventually leave the frame when my face kind of goes backwards. And that's pretty much it. Once you've just masked that out and kind of frame by frame tracked it to your eye, it's pretty sick. But like the last one, we always want to create an adjustment layer. So I apply the curves effect. I click exposure. I type in wiggle comma 0.5 and now this layer will flicker and be red. And I masked it to follow the path of the laser. 
and that's it. You basically are just masking that one line for the laser beam and then just animating a flickering adjustment layer. Honestly, it's easy shit. We work smart, not hard, because you can work on more projects and make more money regardless. Oh, strategy. Okay, great, that's two effects. Now, the third one is how to throw someone to their death. This one I got pretty lucky with, actually. My friends over at 368 let me come shoot there regularly. They're super awesome. My friend Brandon works over there. He lets me in, solid guy. And they luckily had a dummy of a person. So I set my camera up on a tripod and we went upstairs to the second level of 368 and Brandon threw the dummy off of the balcony. What that allowed me to do is frame by frame, mask out the dummy so I could have something realistic actually fall from the sky to the ground. And I position keyframed the dummy to start outside the frame and come in, which made it look like he was coming down really fast. So this is actually pretty simple. It's just gonna be a jump cut. I do one scene where it looks like I'm throwing Brandon up in the air. I stay still. Brandon walks away and I finish the action. So if we watch it, it's just like a, a jump cut, kind of a match action. And then what we do is just we take the next frame of when Brandon was in my hand. We freeze frame it by right clicking, going to time and hitting freeze frame. And we just kind of roughly mask Brandon out. And then all we do is create a position keyframe and just create two points where he flies up. In the layers panel, let's select on automated motion blur so he looks like he's moving really quick. And if we watch it back, it's just a jump cut and a masked out picture with some position keyframes. And also, in the video I made for Amazon Prime, I threw a refrigerator into the great beyond. Same concept applies. I just masked out the refrigerator. I had a clean slate in the background where the refrigerator was not. And I just made a freeze frame of a mask of the fridge, position keyframed it to fly out. Woo, that is spicy. And you guys know I'm on a quest to have the most fire Instagram ever. And so you can find the whole thing on my Instagram. I will do all of the boys superhero effects. So watch that to get excited about it. Whew. And lastly, sorry, this is getting hot. We're gonna learn Homelander's super epic landing. <laughs> this one again is actually super easy. Whenever Homelander lands, because of the force of him landing, everything gets shot out like <laughs> like the ground cracks, things fly out from next to him. And so I wanted to replicate that same look. So what I did is I started with my camera on a tripod facing towards some couches. And I had me and Brandon pull the couches back. And the reason I did that is if I cut out and mask the couches frame by frame as me and Brandon moved them, I can later speed that layer up and make it look like when I landed, the couches just poof, shot out. Next. I basically just stand in frame and I jump and I do my epic stance. The next step is to just frame by frame, rotoscope or mask yourself out. And now I have this perfect layer that I can put on top of everything. And so I went back to footage crate and I found this cool asset of the ground exploding. I put that underneath of my mask. I rotate it and reposition it to fit my scene. And now when I jump up and land, the ground cracks and the couches shoot out. So far, pretty epic, but I didn't fly down, I jumped down. So what we do is we, at the end of everything, get a clean slate. We get a freeze frame of that, and we just put it underneath of everything in the beginning. And at the point where my mask starts, I'm just gonna create a position keyframe and move it over a little bit, so it'll eventually go back to its original position. And then I dragged my masked out me up. I selected automated motion blur in the layers panel. And so now if we watch it back, I come from out of frame into the ground, I smash it, the ground breaks and the couches fly out. Pretty epic, 
but there's one more detail I wanted to add, is when he moves so fast, the air kind of like wiggles from sheer force. So I created an adjustment layer and just kind of created a rectangle behind my mask. And I added the heat distortion layer, which just basically squiggles air. And I made masking keyframes to have it come as I come down. And that's it. If we watch it back with the ground breaking assets in the couches flying out and the air kind of getting distorted and the mask of me coming from out of frame, it looks great. And I was really happy with how this looked. Uh, yes. I think that's it. That is four of all of Homelander's, I think, most popular superhero powers, or I guess super villains. Ooh. Comment down below if you do want to see the tutorials for the rest of the Seven's powers, because like Translucence, Starlight's A-Trains are all in my wheelhouse. And of course, because I live in New York and I need to pay my rent, it's time to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Here we go. From online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform. Let's say you want to reach your intended audience, you will stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. They also make it easy to reach your audience. Let's say you're trying to raise money for a good cause, Squarespace supports your cause by being able to gather contributions with PayPal, Apple Pay, Stripe, and Venmo. And that's not even it. With Squarespace scheduling, clients can easily see your availability because you can add online booking and scheduling options for your classes and sessions. That being said, Squarespace empowers people with creative ideas to succeed. So go to squarespace.com slash Will Carmack or the top link in the description below to get 10% off your first website and domain. And now what I want to leave you guys with is a challenge to develop and work on your own creative space. And also let me know if you like mine. I feel like I spent so many hours looking at good wallpaper and backdrops to film in front of. So let me know if you like this look and my room. And wait. Don't forget, where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will, and have a nice day. But, of course, we have a teleprompter. And have a nice day.